We're at the halfway mark of the Formula 2 season for 2021. We've seen rookies rise to the occasion, fantastic wheel-to-wheel -wheel action, and a closely fought championship where a great many drivers are still in the running. And this is all going to be compiled and summarised by me. Josh Revel. Yeah, I've somehow ended up on the Formula 1 YouTube channel. Funny how life works, right? They've summoned the works of an animator who can't move mouths. But I know you're here to get caught up in all of what's been happening so far this year before we resume action in Monza. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of the more interesting aspects of the championship thus far. Heading into the season, we knew that the likes of Guang Yu Zhou and Robert Sportsman were going to be pegged as title favourites. And they have been up the pointy end of the grid so far this season, with Zhou and Sportsman winning five races between them, occupying P2 and P3 in the standings respectively, heading into Monza. Dan Tictum has also been putting in some stirring drives, with a win at Monaco and four more podiums to his credit. And Yuri Vips' performances in Baku have helped his championship cause, now sitting fifth in the championship and well in the running. Other drivers such as Ralph Boshong have turned a few heads this year, with the Campos driver performing strongly, especially on the streets of Monaco in Baku. However, other drivers have experienced difficulties, shall we say? Take Marcus Armstrong, for instance. Despite promising glimpses of pace throughout the year, which resulted in a podium at Silverstone, his high retirement rate has ultimately hurt his championship chances. And despite the high hopes placed upon Red Bull Jr. Jahan Darivala, he hasn't quite been able to match the pace of teammate Tictum. On the opposite end of the scale, however, we've had an impressive array of rookies join the ranks, making an immediate impact on the championship. I guess we can start off with the heartthrob of the Junior Formula fan base, the Sauber Academy driver, Teo Porsche. Off the back of an amazing F3 season where he took the fight to the Prima outfit, Porsche's first full season of Formula 2 has been just as impressive as the year that came before. This is perhaps best exemplified by his performance at Monaco. In qualifying, Porsche took the pole with a time of 1 minute 20.985, nearly half a second faster than his nearest rival. His win in the feature race that weekend was a showcase of skill, class, and an element of witchcraft. Because to be doing what he did at 17 years old was truly extraordinary. He's not the only rookie making strides either. Oscar Piastri's pace and consistency means he now sits the top of the standings, with his first win coming from a barnstorming drive in the second sprint race at Bahrain. Even more impressive is that he achieved this with the highly acclaimed Robert Schwartzman as his teammate. Other impressive rookies include Liam Lawson, who won his first ever F2 race on debut. And in the second sprint race at Monaco, he drove exceptionally well against the likes of Piastri and Ticton, crossing the line to earn himself his first ever disqualification in Formula 2. It was only extremely disappointing, but it did prove what he could do nonetheless. And despite not seeming like a rookie, Richard Vershaw secured his maiden win in the second sprint race at Silverstone. And although he sits 10th in the standings, it's not really reflective of how well he's been driving that thing this season. There have been plenty of highlights to take from the season thus far, but the one that really kicked it all off was the race that started it all. Liam Lawson romped home to take his first win of the year, winning his debut race in fine style. This of course preceded the second sprint race that weekend, which saw an enthralling battle for victory on the final lap. Despite Joe having started the final lap in the lead, Piastri scythed past into the first corner, with Lundgaard keeping close company. But the Aussie held his nerve and stayed ahead to achieve his first F2 victory in just a second start. Monaco saw some exceptional moments, which included this phenomenal display of driving in the second sprint race. A three-way duel for the lead between Piastri, Lawson and Tictum on a track not half as wet as the harbour they were racing next to. After a thwarted attempt into the Nouvelle chicane, Lawson made a move into Larascas that sent social media into a frenzy. It was a daring move, but fantastic motor racing and great respect shown by the two of them. Tictum too tried his hand at passing Piastri and doing so would ultimately give him the victory after Liam was disqualified. The big story of the weekend, however, arguably, uh, okay, most definitely, was that of Porsche. His pole position time was nearly half a second clear of nearest rival Piastri. This put him on the front row of the grid for the feature race, which is kind of how qualifying works, and he used this to his advantage, getting the jump on the prim appearing of Schwarzman and Piastri. From that point, Porsche was in control, and at no stage during the race seemed to be under threat. He crossed the line on lap 42 to become the youngest race winner in F2 history. The next round in Baku, however, wasn't quite as merry. The feature race saw a three-way tangle between Porsche, Tictum, and Armstrong, which put both Armstrong and Porsche out of the race, with Porsche sustaining a wrist injury, and leaving Tictum to perform a remarkable recovery drive after being given a penalty for the lap 1 gymnastics. Now, yes, there have been some long gaps in the calendar, which is understandably frustrating to put it diplomatically, but as we've seen so far this year, the championship can easily swing in any direction. And as we saw last year with Mick Schumacher's late surge, this championship is not over by a long shot. The results in the coming rounds could dictate who graduates to Formula 1 or who may not end up getting there because, I mean, hey, life is unfair sometimes. The future of Formula 1 is on this very Formula 2 grid, and there are a lot of drivers who have a lot to prove. Could we see a late resurgence from the likes of Schwartzman or Lawson? Could Piastri hold on to his lead and take the title in his maiden year of F2? Or could some wild card blindside them all? I mean, I don't know. You never know in the sport. Which, of course, is why you do not want to miss out on the remainder of this season. I, I mean... 
Trust me, I know.